Hi, my name is Derek Green and thank you for joining us. I'd like to spend some time discussing the accident that changed my life. Being in the hospital, dealing with people, developing my self-independence and rebuilding my self-confidence. In February of 1999, I was involved in a gasoline explosion at my grandparents' property. As far as I can remember, I had gone out to my grandfather's shed where he kept many containers of gas for his tractors. I wanted to get some gas for my car. It was dark and there was no lights in the shed. I walked up in it actually to um, get a funnel to put the gasoline in my car, transfer from one container to another. When I walked in the shed, I lit my lighter to see in the dark. There, were, there was no lights at all in the, the shed, so I lit my lighter to see in the dark. What time of the day was this? It was probably about, it was five o'clock, uh, actually maybe seven, it, it was dark, it was dark, dark huh. definitely, so. Um, I proceeded to go in there and uh, I couldn't see anything at all, so I pulled the lighter out of my pocket and lit it, and as soon as I lit it, um, just, um, it just sparked, just a wave of fire in front of my eyes, just blew up, and, and I mean, it was, it was so quick, it was kind of hard to comprehend at the time, you know, but it just, huge spark. I went up, and that's when I jumped out of the shed. I knew the door was still open. I jumped out, and I proceeded to come right here, rolled that way, back, forth, back, forth, at least three or four times, uh -huh. and then ended up over there. On fire at that point? Yeah, clothes, everything was on fire. Um, I couldn't really see or tell what was going on because my body had went into shock at that time. So. Did you see flames going up? Um, no, it, it wasn't. I mean, I knew I was on fire, but I couldn't really you know see the flames it, it, it's not it's not a vision like that you know you can't really see your hands on fire and everything yeah. so I laid there for probably about at least 15 20 seconds just you know kind of had some thoughts like you know my dad might find me it's gonna be horrible you know he's gonna find me here just burned and and you know obviously not alive and then something kicked something like kicked me I mean it felt like a kick just boom just right through my whole body and just made me jump up. I mean, I, it, it, it's real hard to explain, but just made me jump up. And I jumped up and I just ran at a diagonal angle right through alongside this tree down to my dad's motorhome and ran in the back side of it, ripped the door open to see, because the only hope that I had was to find my dad. I didn't really think to go to the house or to find a hose or whatever was going on. You know, it was just kind of a gloom inside of my head. Okay. Um I got out of the motorhome and I was walking up to the house not knowing anything that was going on and all of a sudden I heard an explosion, a loud explosion, ba boom! And I turned around, I looked over towards this direction and I saw, I saw the shed engulfed in flames. And at that point I knew I couldn't do nothing with that shed so I ran directly into the house and I dialed 911. And I saw Derek about halfway up the driveway, as soon as I saw Derek I ran towards the garden hose. Derek kept walking up towards me. Then I had him lay down. I sprayed a mist over him till the fire was out. And during the time I was spraying Derek, Derek looked at me, looked up at me, and the only words out of his mouth was, "Dad, I think I made a mistake. I'm going to die." And I kept spraying the water. And I said, "Derek, you're already looking better." And I just kept spraying the water and spraying the water. My mom was in the house talking to the paramedics, and um, my mother told me the paramedics were five minutes away. Three or four minutes later, the Lakeside Fire Department arrived with an ambulance to take me to the UCSD Burn Center. I do remember them going through some doors and just pushing me real fast and just uh, um, real gloomy. But I remember um, there, there was surgeons, doctors, there was just a tremendous deal of people surrounded, surrounding me as I looked up. There was just people all around me. And I remember them naming off um, different parts of my body, first degree, second degree, you know, third degree. And I remember hearing that one fourth degree. I'll never forget that. I remember hearing that fourth degree. And I didn't, in all the time that I've been alive, I, I've never heard that. I've never heard that said. I've never, I, third degree is the worst burn you could ever get. And I remember hearing that. And then I remember the lights just coming around my head and then boom. Derek Green almost died after an explosion and fire last month. Those close to him say his strong will helped pull him through the initial crisis. Now he's on the long road to recovery with family, friends and medical staff helping him every step of the way. 
Entering the trauma room, I was quickly put into a drug-induced coma. 90% of my body had been burned. Therefore, not waking up for three months while having a great number of surgeries. The first thing I remember after coming off the morphine was the intense withdrawals of shaking, being cold and hot, and really confused. I had been transferred from the burn center in San Diego to Shriners Hospital in Sacramento. I was there to begin rehab. Rehab was the most painful, challenging, and helpful part of my burn experience. The most painful thing was the showers. The most challenging thing was learning how to walk again. The most helpful thing is learning how to get the use of your body back. Believe me, therapy is worth every single second and minute. While I was in the hospital, I was looking forward to going home more than anything else in the world. It was rather interesting realizing what had happened to me. The biggest thing on my mind was people. I was never used to worrying about or thinking what other people thought of me and how I looked. I personally stayed home and only left to go to rehab. I didn't feel comfortable leaving my house. You must realize, first off, that people are going to look at you, and the biggest thing is how you deal with it. What I did was put myself in other people's shoes and thought, if I were Derek before the accident, what would I think of me now from someone else's eyes? The young ones have a tendency to not really understand. The teenagers are starting to understand but don't always accept me. A lot of it has to do with the maturity level. Some teenagers have a tendency to laugh or turn it into a joke while other teenagers look right through the burn and accept me as I am. The adults most always understand. They look at me as someone who has gone through a tremendous deal of pain and has survived. They understand the burn the best because they've been around and they've seen what goes on in life. When an adult has a conversation with me, the respect level is high. They see a teenage kid who's been through a lot, and they respect that. Personally, I had a struggle with my self-independence when I was in rehab and when I got home. From the start, I had to focus my mind on smarter ways to get around every single little thing, from putting on my socks to opening the door on my car. The sooner I started setting goals for myself, the better off I was. It really comes down to realizing you can't have someone there doing things for you for the rest of your life. So I set some goals. Every day before my mom would ask me if I needed something, I would already have it done. When she would say, good job, Derek, it would encourage me to do more things on my own. One of the things that helped me learn how to use my hands was building my car. Before I was injured, I worked on cars with my father in and out of the body shop. Building my Honda Prelude showed me that I could still do things I did before I was burned. When the project was completed, my self-confidence had increased a great deal. Before I was injured, I was starting the second semester of my senior year in high school and was attending Grace Christian. With all that I had been through, over six months of hospital time and an additional two to three months of recovering therapy, when I returned home, it was real hard to get back into school and start where I had left off. Well, I knew I was going to have to finish up, but I took a year off to get my head together and to get used to everything. Once I got back into the flow of things, everything fell together. My parents pushed me and helped me wherever I needed help. My friends were also right by my side helping me accomplish a goal that I always said I would complete. Well, the dream was final. Graduation was right around the corner. This day was one of the greatest days in my life. It was filled with mixed emotions, a tremendous feeling of accomplishment and relief. And for the first time in my life, I was proud of myself for completing a milestone that I felt had a great deal of importance. My mom cried and my family was so happy for me. He was always an encourager to the people around him. But this tragic accident <coughs> uh, was really... Shortly after graduation, I was asked to speak at Lassen Art Gallery in La Jolla, California for a benefit from the art gallery to the Burn Center. You will be treated by this man. Now let me put you in the, in the presence of a person who has a dramatic story to tell 
briefly, and then Dr. Hansborough. There are I was on fire for a good minute, probably a minute and a half. And this so was quite an experience for me. That's why I'm here a year or two ago, I could have never seen myself else. speaking and, uh, in front of people like I did that was, night. Uh, I was nervous and did not know what um, I was going to say. But when I stepped up to the mic, it all came out like I had rehearsed for months. <laughs> when the speech was over, everyone had questions for me. And I was absolutely amazed how my story touched so many people. When I went home that night, I had a lot of thoughts run through my mind, like just maybe this was what I was supposed to do with my life. I believe everyone was put on this earth for a certain reason, and just maybe this is how my life was supposed to turn out. Well, I will proceed to follow my path I was led in. But I will say this, life is not about the destination, but it is about the journey along the way. I didn't have much self-confidence when I came home from the hospital. With my hands disfigured the way they are, I didn't feel I was worth anything or that my life had much meaning. Needing help to do normal everyday things made me feel less of a man. I was so dependent on my family and friends. Soon after, I realized that I just had some obstacles to overcome like everyone else. Everybody has their mind occupied with something every day that they're dealing with, whether you can see it or not. I realized that all this happened for a reason. It was the most difficult thing that happened to me, but one of the greatest learning experiences of my life. I wake up and think, wow, this tragedy happened to me, but I'm a better person because of it. I have a new respect for life and a reason for being here. This is the card you were dealt with. Make the best of it and think positive thoughts. Life is short and remember, you can do anything you want in this world if you set your mind to it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise.